throne us tonight. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Fill this atmosphere with a sound. Come on, press in. Press in. Press in. Press in past your hurt. Press in past your pain. Press in tonight. You turn on a behold. It ain't a command. It's a command. It ain't a question. It ain't how you feel. The glory wants to reside. Come on, Zion. Body's gonna be healed in the name of Jesus. He's saving somebody's house from foreclosure in the name of Jesus. In a sea for your child. In a sea tonight. Come on, Zion. Don't get quiet. Don't get quiet. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Yananamantia. Ekatana. Oh. Are you filled with the power? Yes, Katana. Are you filled with the power tonight? Ekatana Nandio. Oh, give us tongues clothed in fire tonight. Give us tongues clothed in fire tonight. In the name of Jesus, you are the miracle worker. You are the miracle worker. You are the healer tonight. You are the redeemer tonight. You are our way maker tonight. You are the king of our salvation. You are you're Emmanuel. You're the God with us tonight. Oh God be with us tonight. In the name of Jesus. We're digging until we hit the gold mine. We're digging until we see our children saved. We're digging until we see deliverance. We're digging until we see another manifestation. That's more. There's more tonight. There's more tonight. There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. Yes, God. Hosia, Ekananda, Yedanana Boho, Yetanana Boho. We till the ground tonight in the name of Jesus. We break it up now. We come in with our tractors and our sledgehammers. We till the ground tonight. We won't let go until we see the harvest. Hoshia, whatever you put in, it's what you gonna get out. Whatever you put in, it's what you gonna get out. Don't get comfortable with God. Oh, you turn that up in here. Don't miss him by his next coming because you think you know him. Lift up your hands, Zion. Hoshia. Oh, I come up against every principality in the name of Jesus. I come up against every religious demon now in the mighty name of Jesus. Do something new here. Do something new here. Do something new here. Oh, yet I now. Hey, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We glorify you. We glorify Come on, clap your hands like you got thunder between them. Put a hand clap of praise on it now. Yes, God. Yes, God. Open up doors tonight. Release scholarships tonight. In the name of Jesus. Restore marriages tonight. Heal bodies tonight. In the name of Jesus. Do it, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Do it now. Do it now. Yes, God. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and it is so, and it is so, and it is so, in Jesus' name.
Come on, that's a hand praise for me. Give the Lord some praise. Come on, Zion. I got that shit. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Lift up your head, oh, you can't. Be lifted up, the everlasting God. For the King of glory. For the King of glory. glad here tonight? Do we have any glad people here tonight? We are glad because the Lord has blessed us to see another day. And this is my declaration. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his prayers shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Come on and shout glory. Come on, in that order. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as we open the book, we bring your attention to the 24th Division of Psalms. The earth is the Lord's, and the food is thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the holy hills of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul in vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from the, the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him. They seek the face of Jacob, Selah. Lift up your hands, O ye gates. And lift up ye. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your hands, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Give God a praise if he's your king. Oh, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. At this time, Pastor Harris is going to come with prayer. Shine on me, come on everybody, shine on me, let the light 
from the lighthouse shine oh oh me come on everybody again shine oh me shine From the lighthouse shine oh, on me. Yes, come on, everybody. Yes, yes, oh, yes. be the weightier matter in this place God without you we can do nothing God we need you right now somebody needs healing right now somebody needs a word from you right now somebody needs deliverance right now in the name of Jesus Satan we serve you notice you have no authority here your assignment is canceled we don't ask you we tell you in the matchless mighty name of Jesus the fire of God be upon you all witches and warlocks and conjuring and spells you're canceled let God arise and let his enemies be scattered in the name of Jesus. And we'll ever give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. And if you agree with that, come on, put your hands together and let's praise the God of our salvation. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Help me say, Lord Jesus. Come on, Lord Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made. It's a wonderful day. It's a glorious day. Hallelujah. And we rejoice in this day. Yes, come on. All over the building, we're going to keep one big praise.
speak well of him. He's been kind. He deserves a praise. He deserves your praise. Give it to him. Give it to him. Don't play with it. Give God praise.
house is gonna be all right. Because it's time to bring you on. It's time to bring mother on. Go ahead and say, God bless our supervisor. Mother Ada Steven. She's coming at this time. How they do. Well, praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but I got joy unspeakable down in my soul. But when I think about where he brought me from, when I think about how he changed my life, glory, glory, glory to God. He didn't have to do it, but I'm so glad he did. I want him to know I appreciate him. This joy that I have, well, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, glory to God, because see the joy that I have, no matter what's going on in my life, whether I'm up or down, whether I'm sick in my body, something's down on the inside. Glory. Thank you, Lord. I just got to get into the house of the Lord. Just get me in the house of the Lord. Because when I get in, the spirit of the Lord makes me. You just don't know like I know what he's done for me and where he's brought me from time after time. Glory to God. See, I don't worry about things that's happening in the world because I know I can come into the house of the Lord. And I can get on my knees and I can begin to pray. Prayer changes things. Changes situations. And it changes people. So you don't have to worry about the enemy. Just get on your knees and begin to pray. And ask God to change things. The God that I serve, he will change things. Amen. And so I'm so grateful to be here on tonight. One more time in the house of the Lord. One more time to give him praise. See, we don't know what's going to happen on tomorrow. I don't want to be in a position where I'm saying I should have gave him some praise on last night. But I want to give him praise while I can. Because I don't know what tomorrow holds for me. But I love him with all my heart, and I'm just thankful to be in the house of the Lord. I thank God for Bishop Hutchins. Looking forward to him speaking on tonight, his wife and his mom. Amen. We're so glad to have you with us on tonight. And then we have two great bishops, Bishop Bob Jackson and Bishop Ron Hill, the greatest bishops on this side of heaven. If you just follow them, they are examples. They love the Lord. They love people. They love the brethren. Can't find nothing no better than that. Amen. So I want you all to know I appreciate all the brethren here, the uh, administrative assistants, and the chief of staff, and he been working his, he just, him and them Chuck Monks been going to at it. <laughs> but, bec uh, but because of him, we all we have to do is sit and enjoy. Amen. Because he's done an awesome job on this week. We thank you. Amen. You know, sometimes we, you got to give people their flowers while they can smell them. Because when they're laying up here, they can't hear nothing that you're saying. You know, we have to let people know that we appreciate them and the sacrifices that they have made. And, you know, I look at our bishop and Bishop Hill, they, they have a same kind of spirit. And they're always going out trying to win souls for the Lord. They're like double teaming now that he's the bishop. Amen. And I, I, I really thank God for them, for their, their heart.
See, in order for you to go out and, and be a witness, you got to have a heart for, for souls. And they, they're a prime examples for us to follow. Amen. So I want them to know that we appreciate them on tonight and all their labor of love. And I'm just grateful on tonight to be here, asking you to continue to pray for us, lift up our hands. I tell you, we're on a mission for God. We tried, to, we tried to do this thing. Amen. And then I want to thank the Lord for Lady Barbara Jackson. I certainly appreciate her. She is so supportive of the women's department. And she's always doing whatever her hands can find to do. And I want you to know I appreciate you. And then I'm going to introduce this lady that has a wealth of experience. She's been in the church forever. And we can look to her. You know, it's good when you can look to someone else and be encouraged and, and gain some experience and some knowledge. And she's a prime example of that. Mother Harris, would you come? Second to nine. She could be the general yeah. <laughs> Praise God. What a blessing it is to be among the saints. This ninth setting of the Holy Convocation. We honor Bishop Bob Jackson, my Bishop, Bishop Ronald Hill, to Superintendent Williams, and to all of these esteemed men of God. Lady Jackson, God bless you. Our supervisor, Mother Ada Stevens, and our speaker's wife on tonight. Amen, Lady Karen Hutchins. God bless these wonderful women of God. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Thank God. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Pick me up, turn me around, place my feet on solid ground, gave me a mind to live for him. And I give him thanks. What a blessing it is to be here and to lift up the name of the Lord. God bless you, saints of God. We're looking forward to the word of God on tonight. Amen. From this wonderful man of God. God bless you on tonight. Praise the Lord. We certainly thank God for Mother Harris. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to ask the Bishop Ron Hill. CWC South to come at this time. Let's say amen. Come on, give him God. Come on, give God a big praise. Come on, give God a big praise for Bishop Ron Hill. And everybody said, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I certainly honor the Lord tonight and to Bishop Robert Bob Jackson. My, you know, it's, a, it's an unusual thing when somebody's your friend and then they become your leader. It's not an easy thing, but uh, I've learned to obey and uh, everybody said amen to that. Amen. <laughs> I love Bishop Jackson. Um, he has been a tremendous blessing in my life and I appreciate him and his dear wife and Mother Stephen and Mother Harris, all of the great men and women of God, the house been addressed. But I don't just say I love everybody, amen. amen. I said I love everybody. I, I was thinking about uh, if I would get the mic tonight, what I'd say. And here's what I want to say. Uh, most of you in here don't know the potential that you have. One of your biggest problems is that you don't know how great you are. Mm-hmm, yeah. God 
has downloaded in you great gifts and talents. There are some things that you can do very well. Amen. Um, the enemy is afraid of you. He's afraid that you're going to find out that he's afraid of you. That's what he's afraid of. Many of us are afraid of the devil, but the devil's afraid that you're going to find out who you really are. Amen. Also, I would like to say to you tonight, most of us don't know how loved we are. And we don't know the perfect salvation that God has provided. If you, are, if you have repented of your sins and if you have accepted Christ as your Savior, may I tell you tonight that you are perfectly saved. There are no flaws. There are no flaws in your salvation. If you're born again, raise your hand and say, I'm perfectly saved. I'm perfectly saved. Perfectly saved. Amen. So stop trying to get better. There's no point. You are as high in salvation as you ever will get. What you should do is try to walk in the love that God has placed uh, inside of you. Yes, uh, I am a soul winner. Uh, in this jurisdiction, I'm number two. Your bishop is number one. But I don't mind being number two to a man who is as, uh, as a great soul winner as Bishop Jackson is. Um, however, he was not in Memphis, Tennessee on last Saturday. And it wasn't my fault. Amen. And uh, a group from Love and Unity and um, Acts for Gospel were in Memphis, Tennessee, and we went door to door and led uh, 282 people to Christ. <laughs> save man to that. I said, save man to that. <laughs> and. Uh, so my, one of my adjutants, Alaska Freeman, and I were working door to door. And, and we prayed with 21 people. And so I'm, I'm feeling like, boy, when I get back to the church, I'm going to get up and boast about my 21. I, man, I couldn't wait to get the mic until Patrice got up and started talking about 31. I said, sit that woman down somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was wonderful, and I want to encourage all of you. Uh, let me just take a poll. How many of you have prayed with somebody to receive Christ this week? Raise your right hand this week. If you pray with somebody to receive Christ this week, stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Let's give these people a hand, everybody. Praise God. Amen. Well, as I take my seat, I want you to know, that I have been blessed to pray with seven people already this week. Has anybody done seven? I didn't think so. Amen. Come on, clap your hands for Bishop Hill. If you're glad to be here tonight and a part of CWC, just jump up real quick and shout glory. All right. I'm, I'm not. Don't, don't, y'all, they dabash. Y'all, y'all be good tonight. One, one more time for the Holy Ghost. Come on, if you're glad and glad to be a part of CWC, jump up and shout glory. I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna be good. I'm, I'm, I'm. Can I? Can I? 
can I, can I, can I, can I, can I share with you? This is a unique jurisdiction. Okay, I, I'm going to say it to y'all clap. This is a unique jurisdiction. We're not just covering Northern California, but we're covering Southern California. Yeah, y'all better understand and know that the, there's a lot of eyes that, that are watching CWC. Amen. Say amen. amen. They're, 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 they're probably wondering how do we do what we do. It's because of the Lord Jesus. And I'm grateful when you take our leader and along with Bishop Ron Hill and then you, 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 you couple them with Mother Ada Stevens and Mother Harris and Lady Barbara and all of these, this, this bouquet of roses of women and all these administrative assistants and superintendents and we all get along. And we're all walking in love. We all say, Lord Jesus, the enemy is on his heels. So let the redeemer of the Lord say something. Come on, say something. I said, give him praise tonight. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm just super excited about California West Coast. Our eyes have not seen, our ears have not heard, neither has it entered into our hearts. The good thing, okay, the good things that God has already prepared for us. If I could say anything, I would say everything to CWC is going up, up, up. We're grateful. I just want to stand in because this is the general and we're grateful. And if you ever sit in the room, and I want to encourage the pastors on Friday from 10 to noon, we should be there because not many leaders are pouring into pastors. Say amen. amen. And when you combine Bishop Hill and our Bishop, Bishop Bob Jackson together and you put them in the room, listen, we leave out or we begin by repenting. The first thing we do as pastors is we repent. Amen. Say amen. amen. And listen, we leave our fully charged, not just charged, but fully charged to amen, move this gospel and press it forward. I want you to do this wonderful man, this great privilege. Stand to your feet and let's receive our very own Bishop Bob Jackson, prelate of California West Coast. Jurisdiction. Now reach over and don't don't grab the hand. Just give him a fist bump and tell him I'm glad to see you tonight. Okay, that's that's all right for that one. Now go to the other one on the other side of you and give him a fist bump and tell him, listen, I love you. Come on, somebody. Tell them I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Anybody just glad you're saved tonight? Anybody just glad you're saved? Can you remember when you weren't saved? Please be seated. Please be seated. God bless you. I was just sitting there thinking. And I feel like I believe that God gave me a word for you tonight. The Lord just simply laid it on my heart to tell you this, that he loves you. Somebody ought to get excited about God loving you. The God of the universe, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob told me to tell you he loves you. You're the apple of his eye. Isn't that precious? Sometimes I just think about where I came from. See, people think in the church that you're just some kind of wimp. You never, you know, you don't drink, you don't smoke, you don't cuss, you don't. 
because you've been in church all your life. Even folks who've been in the church all their life had to get saved. But I thank God I didn't grow up in the church. I grew up in the world. Campbell Village. They call the Lower Bottoms. Campbell Village and my daddy got a raise when we moved to Brookfield. Went to Elmhurst. Went to Castlemont. We are the Knights. The mighty, mighty. And I'm telling you, I thought living was good being a sinner. Until I got saved. Oh, if sinners only knew how good it is to be saved. The joy of the Lord. With no drugs. Go to bed and wake up. Get out of bed and you don't have nobody's leftovers. You don't have no hangover. With your head in the toilet. And then you pray, Lord, if you just let me get out of this. I'll never drink again. And before the day is over. Oh, but tonight I can tell you this. I thank God I'm saved. And I'm sanctified. And I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Do you thank God you're saved? and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost so the songwriter said when I look back over my life and I think things over I can truly say that I've been blessed I've got a testimony anybody got a testimony when I look Well, praise God. Got a testimony. Hallelujah. Thank God I have a testimony. And we're getting ready to bring a young elder. And my mind went back to when I was 17 years old, when the Lord called me to the ministry. And we had young ministers preaching. And uh, I was ordained at age 21 and appointed the assistant pastor to the late Bishop C.C. C. Cox. I've been in the church all my life. But I want to say to Elder Stephen, they had a saying when I was coming up. They would say, get up in high and sit down in the fire. And when I got up, it was already high. All I had to do was catch on fire. <laughs> Praise God. So I, I guess that's why I got, I've been like this all my life. Amen. I don't know what 17 from 81 leave right now, but that's how long I've been. Woo! I sure could take about two minutes right now. But we got a preacher coming. And I, I'll take my seconds while he's coming. Come on, say, God bless Ella Stephen. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, preacher. Amen. That was good enough for me. Now let's give God a praise in this house. Come on, open up your mouth. Let's give God some glory. God been too good to us. He kept us all week long. He kept my mind together. When I wanted to fall apart, God kept me.
It's something about the Lord. When, when, when things around you start to fall apart. And when things fall apart, sometimes you want to just want to break down and cry. Because then you start thinking about how good God is. And I can tell you right now, God been so good to me. I had a $16,000 debt. And me and my wife, we were just sitting there pondering over how we going to pay this debt. And next thing you know, she said, it's going to be all right. And my mind start messing up because I know how good God is. And I know that I couldn't fall apart just yet. I had to pray and ask the Lord, Lord, do something for me right now. I need you right now. I need you to come in my situation. I need you to do something new for me. I've been too, you've been too good to me. And so me and my wife, we were going back and forth. But we didn't know we owed $16,000. And the tax people were just going back and forth asking us questions. And when we give, we were responding and we was conversating. And I'm saying to myself, Lord, please don't let this be a high amount. And so, the, and so the, we were just kid, kept on just praying and talking. And next thing you know, the, the lady gave me a piece of paper. And I still have that piece of paper in my wallet right now. And that piece of paper said that I get $2,400 back. I don't have to owe anything. And I was just wanting to tell you, your mind might break tricks on you, but don't give up on God. I want you to press, press in the Lord. Press, walk, walk in your anointing. Walk until you get delivered. Walk. Tell God do something for you. Whoa! A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And the devil was trying to make me feel like I was I was wavering back and forth. Because I knew that God was there. But I knew I owe six days. The lady said I owe some money. I just didn't know what it was until she said, at the end, you owe $16,000. Do you not know that I gave God all the glory and all the praise because he's been so good to me? So I want to let you know, don't give up. Don't give in. Don't go in the towel. But I want you to open up your mouth and tell God, thank you. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for keeping my mind. I could have gave up, but I didn't throw in the towel because God been too good to me. When I think of his goodness and what he's done for me, yeah. think of his goodness, how he set me free, I can dance, 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 dance.
Hallelujah. 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 If you love the Lord, shall glory. Glory. Oh, glory. Don Phillips, I think it's time now. I heard a preacher say we didn't had the hallelujah. Says now it's time for the do you lose. At this time, Pastor Don, after the choir, you're going to come and let them do you lose. Is that all right? Then all right. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, get your do you and let it loose you. That means let it loose you.
Come on, let's lift our hands and give him praise and worship tonight for your goodness and your mercy. How many of you offer praise tonight? Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Let's show God we appreciate him. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give that choir another hand. We certainly honor the presence of the Lord in this place tonight. Can you feel his presence in this place? Hallelujah. We honor our bishop tonight, the Bishop Bob Jackson. Come on, help me celebrate our bishop. Bless you, bishop. To Bishop Ron Hill, the administrative staff. To our mother, Lady Barbara Jackson, Supervisor Harris, and to you, the people of the Lord. God is good, isn't he? I can't hear nobody. I said, God is good, isn't he? The Lord dropped in my spirit this afternoon about 6.30, and he confirmed it by the words of our bishop tonight. The scripture said, for God so loved the world. You didn't hear me. I said, for God so loved the world. That's enough to dance on. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I want to challenge you tonight to get into a position to give. And I found out that when you get into a position to give, God becomes obligated to his word. The Bible says in Luke, says give and it, you read it. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall God cause men to give unto your bosom. How many of you need a blessing right about now? Blessings come in different forms. Sometimes they come in finance. Sometimes they come in the healing of your body. Sometimes they come in the saving of your family. But how many of you need God to do something? Come on, don't fool me tonight. How many of you really need God to do something? If God were standing in front of you right now and asked you what you want from him, how would you praise him? Wait, 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 wait. Let me try that again. If God was literally standing in front of you right now and asked you what you want from him, and you told him, and he said, grant it. How would you praise him? I heard Bishop last night say, give a better praise. I heard him say, give a better praise. Hallelujah. What we're doing tonight is we're positioning ourselves for a blessing from God. Because someone said, it wasn't the Bible, but somebody said, when praises go up, blessings come down. And I came to tell somebody tonight, if you praise him, he's going to make a way. If you praise him, he's going to bring you out. If you praise him, He'll open the door. Somebody shall praise the Lord. My God, my God. Somebody say it's already done. 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 Look at somebody tell them. It's already done. It's already done. 
It's already done. It's already done. Put your hands together. Well, clap your hands and praise him. Listen, I want you tonight to trust God. Forget about everything else. I heard the young man say from 16,000 to zero. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that's zero. 16,000 that you owed with a minus of 2,400. Only God can do it. Only God can do it. Only God can do it. Do 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 it. All right, listen. I I learned something. Old preacher told me when I asked him. I wasn't but 15, and they told me to raise an offering. And I asked them, I said, how do I raise an offering at 15? She said, son, do you pray what to preach? And I said, yes. He said, well, pray what to ask for. Some of y'all will catch that later. I need about 20 people that will stand with me with $100 real quick. 20 people that will stand with me with $100 real quick. And what we're about to do is we're about to name this seed that we're about to plant. And I just believe, I just believe, I just believe God. God gave us a building worth over $2 million with $1 down. Some of y'all don't believe it. Only God can do it. I heard the Lord said 30, 30 people to stand with $100. Come on, stand, stand, stand. You're here because God said it. And watch God turn some things around for you. Come on, I need, I need. I need you to stand with me with 30, with $100. Come on, I got six more. With one, come on. Mm. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. I need just four more of you to stand with a hundred dollars. It's already done. It's already done. Thank you, thank you. It's already done. It's already done. Now you said you're sitting there and you said if I had a hundred dollars, I would give it. But the Holy Ghost said to tell you to get your best gift in your hand and stand to your feet. I still see too many of you sitting. Get your best gift in your hand. If you're writing a check, make your checks to CWC. Please don't make it to Acts. And after this offer, you can make it to Greater Grace, but but right now, make it to CWC. <laughs> If you're giving by cash, that's beautiful. If you want to use Cash App, CWC Cash App is dollar sign, Cal West Coast. Those of you watching us online, plant that seed. I believe God's got a miracle for you. Give Lafay is California West Coast. Everybody is standing and hold that gift in your right hand. As the prophet of God, I want to decree and declare 
something good is about to happen. I said something good is about to happen. Say with me, Lord Jesus, with this seed that I'm planting, germinate it and then let it bring forth 1,000 fold in Jesus' name. Amen. Need you to turn to your left. Please turn to your left. My right. Turn to your left. And we're in the hands of the ushers. Somebody shout, it's already done. 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 My healing. My deliverance. The way is already made. It's already done. Prophesy to yourself. And say it's already done. It's already done. they're finished marching I'd been suffering some things in my body and I went to the lab and the doctor told me to come in on Monday morning and I went in looking to hear some good news but the news wasn't good I had a diagnosis that changed my lifestyle and my family have me under close observation. And I'm not supposed to be doing other than the bow shot. Woo! Mm. <laughs> what he told me, supposed to stop me from. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. But I can't, I can't stop, I can't stop, I can't stop, yes sir. I'd rather go to heaven with a sickness than to stop praising God. I, I, I feel 
better right now than the Debo show. Cool. Than I did before I came. I got a young 83 year old wife to stay here for. And I don't even want to put it in the air what he said I have. I don't even, I don't even want to put that, I don't even want you to think about that. But what I want, Bishop, I, I just believe if you just lay your hand on my forehead, hallelujah. Let the devil don't show co The Holy Ghost know what it's all about. Come on, church, let's clap our hands. Come on, let's come in an agreement. Let's come in an agreement. Come on. It's already done. Hey! Come on, it's already done. It's already done. The pair of, of agreement have already went forth for the healing of the man of God. And for that we rejoice. For that we rejoice. For that we, we, we rejoice, we rejoice, we rejoice. I said we rejoice, we rejoice. Come on church, come on, come on, come on. Come on, take out 60 seconds and let us rejoice in the healing power of God. Come on. Hey! He's a mighty healer. He's a healer. I said he's a healer. It's already done. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And when Bishop was praying for him, all of you that's in this room that have sickness in your body, you are already healed in Jesus' name. You are already healed in Jesus' name. You are already healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may have your seats. You praise the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. And those that are uh, in the healing ministry, Pastor Wright, they normally will tell you to go back and tell the doctor, it is not so. It is not so. Go back and get checked one more time. Get checked one more time. Hey! Get checked one more time. I believe, hey! Get checked one more time. Hey, glory. Let me just share this real quick, just real quick. Bishop was praying. Bring me down just real quick. Bishop was praying for Pastor Jackson. Pastor Jackson was suffering with high blood pressure. It was extreme. The power of God came in the pastor's meeting. And he had no more problems since. Do you remember that? You remember that? Now let's clap our hands for real. Because it's already done. Go back and get checked again. Hey! 
Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Hey! I know he's a healer for myself. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You may have your seats. We have a couple of announcements. Thank you, Jesus. This is what we come here for. For the people can be healed, delivered, and set free. All for the glory of God. Hallelujah. If you got a crooked leg, God will straighten it out right now. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. You got high blood pressure, God dealing with it right now. If you got cancer in your body right now, God's dealing with it right now. Hey! Cop your hands and praise him. Cop your hands and praise him. It's already done. I feel it in the atmosphere. Hey! It's going over like a wave. It's already done. It's already done. Bless his name, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your healing power. Thank you, Jesus, for your healing power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Woo. Hey, bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Come on, lumps and bumps are being removed right now. Come on. God is healing the back of your legs. He's strengthening your muscles. Hey! Come on, arthritis. You got to come up out of here. Come on, arthritis. You got to come up out of here in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hey! You've been having back problems. Just start moving around. Just start moving around. That's it. Just start moving around. You got leg problems? Just start. Just start moving. Come on. Hey! your fingers I hear the Holy Ghost say just start moving your fingers just start moving your fingers come on come on come on come on come on yeah 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 go back go back go back go back and get checked one more time hallelujah heart palpitation Heart palpitation, be gone in the name of the Lord. Asthma, be gone in the name of the Lord. Your lungs are healed in Jesus' name. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. This is a true announcement that I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. Come on, announce it. Announce it up out of your spirit. Announce it up out of your spirit. Woo! Hey! Hey, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Take out 60 more seconds. Just thank him. All in your neck. Come on, all in your neck. Just start moving your neck. We're getting ready to, to go into the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Superintendent Williams is going to come. Y'all just keep praising him. We'll do the announcements at the end. While God is here moving. While God is here moving. I said, why God is here moving, why he's healing.
come on stand all over this house the presence of the Lord is here I feel him in the atmosphere hey said the presence of the Lord is here hallelujah what a good time for the word of the Lord hallelujah this is a great announcement hallelujah he's known throughout the world the gospel pulpiteer and singer but right now he's coming to declare the word of the Lord clap your hands for Bishop Norman Hutchins Frontline Ministries come on Inglewood California Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your presence in this place. Now, God, I pray in this brief moment that you would give us your divine revelation and your impartation. Let the word of God penetrate our hearts. I pray, God, that you would release this word to our spirit man. And we will receive it with the joy and thanksgiving. We praise you in advance for the miracles, signs, and wonders. And God, I thank you for speaking in my spiritual ear and giving me what to say on the night. And so we thank and we praise you in advance in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Come on, clap your hands. And give the Lord praise. Please be seated. Amen. Amen. The house has already been addressed. But I must say thank and praise God for Bishop Bob Jackson tonight. Bless you, Bishop. And, and to Bishop Ron Hill on tonight. Bless you, Bishop. And um, I am just so honored as a young man to have this opportunity to share in this setting on tonight. Thank God for my wife. Next month will be 24 years of marriage. Stand up, honey. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And in 1985, my mother went home to be with the Lord. I was the last one with her alive and I cooked her breakfast, lunch and dinner and, uh, and God placed a new mother in my life and she's here tonight, Dr. Tanya Lewis. Stand up, mama. <laughs> Amen. And we're just so grateful to God. Amen for what the Lord has done. Are y'all ready for me? Yeah. All right, come on, come on. Let's hurry up. We, yeah, come on, come on, come on. I'm sorry. Amen. Uh, you know, um, I am just so grateful to God because I had no idea when I was a young boy writing songs that one day God would let the world sing them. And in my prayer time, oftentimes these songs were just, just, just my admiration and my, and my love toward God. And the Lord began to tell me it's bigger than you. I remember when I was sick in the hospital fighting for my life Amen. And a choir from Sweden made a video and sent it to me. And I just begin to praise and thank God for that. I got a word that the Lord has planted in my heart that I want to share with you. You know, um, you know, people know me as a singer and songs and all of that. But the Lord made it clear to me years ago that music is your gift, but preaching is your calling. Yes. And I love songs, I love music, but when your back is against a wall and you have to make some tough choices and decisions, you're going to need more than a song. You're going to need the word of God. The Bible says that is the written man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I love music, but nothing takes the place of the word of God. David said, I desire the word more than my necessary food. 
He said, it is a lamp to my feet and a light to my pathway. Paul said, and I, brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimonies of God. He said, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. He said, I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I'm convinced that one word from God can turn your life upside down. Somebody shout one word. Amen. And the Lord has given me a word I want to share with you. And then we're going to pray. Amen. But I want to do this song. This is a very special song for me because this is the first song I wrote to God after being hospitalized for three and a half months fighting for my life with COVID. People in the room to my left were dying. People in the room to my right were dying. And someone asked me, did you think you were going to die? And I said, no, because if God is talking about your future, you cannot die in your present. But after three and a half months, God allowed me to come out of there. I couldn't walk out because you lay three and a half months in a bed. You're not walking. And so I remember them putting me in the ambulance. And it was taking me to uh, rehab. It was about a two hour ride. And while I was in there tied to the bed, bumpy ride, I started thinking about my experiences for that three and a half months. And I tried to come up with words to say to God how much I appreciate you. Hallelujah. And the only word I could come up is this right here. Come on, help me. Yes. Hallelujah. In the back of the ambulance, I said, Hallelujah. 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 You are God. I told him this. You're God of the mountain. You're God of the valley. Hallelujah, you are God. Oh, yes. Hallelujah, you are God. Come on, y'all. Help us out. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it out. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you are I said this, all creation, all creation, give him glory, give him glory, all the heavens, come on, sing his praise. Say, there's none like him. God, I'm 
our God. God, I bless your name, say, Hallelujah. You. Yeah. You Turn around. You. You are God. Last time. Hallelujah. Make it real big. Yeah. I'm very conscious of the time. I like to pray after I preach, and so prayer is going to have to be a part of the preaching time. From the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11, very familiar verse, verse number 6. Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 6. It says, but without faith. It is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. For just a few moments and then we're going to pray. I want to talk to us tonight from this subject. Understanding God through the eyes of faith. Will you say that with me? Understanding God through the eyes of faith. Great God today. You know, the mind of a physical man cannot comprehend the origin of God. It is impossible. Anything that is not tangible or uh, scientifically proven. Oftentimes it is quickly rejected as facts and accepted as fiction. And so trying to uh, understand God through the physical can be really frustrating because there are too many questions uh, that goes unanswered when you're trying to understand God apart from faith. Just like, just like Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. You know that it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. In the King James it says heaven, but in the original language it's heavens because God created the first, second, and third. But interestingly, Genesis 1 and 1 is not the beginning of God. It is the beginning of the universe. So, so, so the human mind has a hard time understanding how can there not be a beginning to God when there's a beginning to us. See, Genesis 1 and 1 is the beginning of the universe but not the beginning of God. I like to put it like this. Uh, Genesis 1 and 1, uh, 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 God, God didn't start when start started, God started starting. You, you see what I'm saying? Or, or you could say God didn't begin when the beginning begun, God began the beginning. And so when you think about it like that, it's kind of difficult sometimes in the human mind to comprehend Amen. Uh, the beginning of God. The Bible also teaches us that everything that is was in God before there was anything. And so it was out of God's mouth that he spoke things into existence. He, he, he said, let there be light came. Let there be trees came. Let there be. And everything that was in him became what he said. Now, apart from faith, it's hard to understand that because I thought about it one time and I said, you know what? If you had met God before there was anything on the street of nowhere and the corner of nothing, you would have been meeting everything, but you wouldn't have known it. Because everything, amen, is locked up inside of God. 
And so trying to understand God through the physical will not work. I mean, think about this. Think of, how, how do you understand this? How do you understand this? Jesus was young enough to be Mary's baby. But he was old enough to be her daddy. Her savior. Her master. Her lord. Her king. Her redeemer. Am I right about it? Hallelujah to God. And so one of the first things or the first principle we need to understand uh, in understanding God through the eyes of faith. And that's this. You, you re always remember this. Faith is not explained. Faith is believed. Come on, say it. Faith. Is not explained. Faith is believed. Which means you don't have to explain it to believe it. Am I right about it? Amen. I mean, think about this. You, you, you can't explain how a black cow can eat green grass and produce white milk, but you drink it. And you believe it's good for you. And so, so, um, being able to explain faith is not a requirement to have faith. One of the best persons to train as a car mechanic is not somebody who think they know it all. But you find somebody that don't know nothing about a car. They'll be easier to train. Because to train someone who think they know, you have to unlearn them first. Now I'm going to write about it. And so one of the problems in understanding God through the eyes of faith is we think we've got to have all of the knowledge of the Bible in order to understand God. He said, but if thou just canst believe. He didn't say if you can understand. He says, if you can just believe. Because faith is not explained. Faith is believed. Which reminds me of this little girl. She was in the... Uh, 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 fifth grade and she always came to school with a Bible and uh, her, her teacher was an atheist and, and one day the teacher saw the girl and she, she asked her she said what's that on your desk? The little girl said that's my Bible and, and the teacher said well you, you believe in this Bible? She says yes the teacher as an atheist she says you believe all of this? She said yes so the teacher said well do you believe that, that Jonah was swallowed by a whale? and the little girl says yes I believe it and so the teacher said to the girl, well, you know, scientifically, a whale cannot swallow a man. The little girl thought about it. She says, well, she said, well, when I get to heaven, I'll ask Jonah. <laughs> the teacher said, well, what if, what if Jonah's in hell? She said, well, then you can ask him. <laughs> because faith is not explained. It's just believe. Am I right about it? Not only that, but understanding God through the eyes of faith is also one of the functions of the Holy Spirit. Two of the functions of the Holy Spirit is to help is to help to grow our faith in God. As a matter of fact, one of them is to build our faith, and the other one is to reveal the truth of God through faith. You've seen it in the scriptures, Jude chapter 1 verse 20. He says, but ye beloved, he says, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Here it is, praying in the Holy Ghost. And so when you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, it builds your faith. Because the spirit, the spirit bears witness with God. And because, and because he's a part of the Trinitarian structure of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, amen, he recognizes who God is and he reveals God in you. Yeah. Am I right about that? Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The Bible says this, the Bible says this. He says, for the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them because they are spiritually designed. So it takes the Holy Spirit to give you the discernment of who God is. 
Then he goes on to say, but the natural man, physical, cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. My God. Even the deep things of God. Because there's some stuff that's so deep that God can reveal to us that the human mind cannot comprehend. Am I right about it? But then another function of the Holy Spirit that helps us, amen, to know who God is, understand that God through the eyes of faith is, is John 16 and 13, where he says, when the Holy Spirit of truth is come, watch this, he will guide you, what, into all truth. Then he says, amen, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear. Wait a minute. Whatsoever he shall hear, that will he speak. So that means the Holy Spirit's job is not to boast about himself. The Holy Spirit only speaks what he hears. In other words, he's at the boardroom table in glory. And when God is talking, the Holy Spirit is hearing so, so here's what faith teaches me. So faith tells me that if the Holy Spirit ever tells me something that's going to happen in my life, I don't have to wait to see it to rejoice because he only speaks what he already heard. And if he said it, he heard it. And if he heard it, it's coming to pass. Am I right about that? Amen. Amen. So understanding God through the eyes of faith is one of the functions of the Holy Spirit because he reveals God. Amen to our spirit man. And then, and then, and then, and then one of the things we must always remember and that is God never wanted us to understand him through religion. No, no, no. He, didn't, he never wanted us to understand God through religion. He wants us to understand God through faith. That's right. Amen. 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 And, and, and as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, amen, God did not create religion as a way for us to understand him anyway. Am I right about it? Now, now, religion, I'll tell you what religion is. Religion... Was, was a human attempt to create an alternate route to God that bypasses Jesus. That's why many religions, amen, they avoid the word justification. They avoid the word reconciliation. They avoid the word atonement. Because to talk about those three, you got to recognize Jesus. And you can't have faith in God if you don't believe in Jesus. Because the Bible said, because of one man's sin, many are made sinners. But because of the obedience of one Christ, many are made righteous. You can't be righteous without Christ. As a matter of fact, justification is one of the branches of the grace of God where he removes the legal guilt off of our life. You see. In other words, we stood guilty, amen, in a court of law and we should have died. But because of grace and mercy, he justified us. Now, justification, justification doesn't say we're not guilty of the crime. Justification says you're guilty. But I'm, I'm, I'm removing the guilt off of you. Just as if you never sin. Am, am I right about it? And then faith comes along. Through the eyes of faith, faith comes along and says, if God justified you, then don't worry about folk that don't believe in your justification. Because you didn't die for me. Justification says there is now therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Watch this. Who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ have made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak in the flesh. God 
sent his own son in the likeness of sin for flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled Jesus is the fulfillment I said Jesus is the fulfillment of the law and you don't have to explain it you just got to believe it tell your neighbor don't explain it just believe it Come on, clap your hands and praise the Lord. Come on, clap your hands and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, matter of fact, if you look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, amen, it will confirm that God had nothing to do with religion. Matter of fact, the first example of religion in the Bible is seen in Genesis chapter 3, verse 7. Let me read it real quick. It says, this is Adam and Eve, says, and the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. Here it is. And they sold fig leaves, and they sold fig leaves, and they sold fig leaves, and they sold fig leaves together and made themselves apron. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I want to tell you, that was the birth of religion. Because one of the definitions of religion is to clothe yourself. Apart from the righteousness of God. So when Adam sinned, he recognized he was unrighteous. But, but before God would come walking in the cool of the day, he tried to fix it. So he took fig leaves and clothed himself. But when God came walking, he said, man, what's this you got on? God, I, I, I disobeyed and I thought I'd correct my uh, unrighteousness and make myself righteous and so I saw figly and God said hold up it's bigger than that it's bigger than that he said first of all he said first of all without the shedding of blood there is no remission for sin but let me tell you what you just did Adam you just put in motion the plan of redemption and because I love you I'm going to drive you out of the garden but in the process of time Jesus is going to come to the earth and die for your sins so you can come boldly to the throne to obtain mercy. But until then, I will kill the first animal and clothe you. It's not the skin, it's the blood. Faith teaches me I am cleansed By the blood and so religion is any attempt to clothe myself apart from the justification and reconciliation see reconciliation is because I'm see because because we're sinners the Bible says we are, we are alienated we're enemies of God then he says and, and and we're not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be so it took Jesus to become the atoning sacrifice the word atoning has three words in it. At one mint. A-T-O-N-E-M-E-N-T. -E -E at one. So when we were alienated because of the blood of Christ, we became one with God again. And it takes faith to believe that. Am I right about it? Well, let me hurry up here. And so, another principle we see is in our text. It says, but without faith... It is impossible to please him. Here it is. For he that cometh to God must believe. That's it. Must believe that he is. Must believe that he is. And as I was reading that verse, the Lord said to me, he says, Norman, I want you to tell my people that faith in God should not only be uh, uh, you know, it, it, you know, because a lot of times we equate, we equate the blessings of God with how much faith we have. Am I right about it? Amen. 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 So, 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 so God says, tell my people that, that, that faith in God should not always be how you measure how blessed you are. The blessings. I'm blessed. 
you know, I, I, I have faith because I'm blessed. I have faith because I got this. I have faith because I got that. But God says that's not the only way he, you measure faith. Am I right about it? Watch this. Because, because sometimes God will build your faith not through blessings, but through the weight of affliction. Am I right about it? That, that, that's, why, that's why Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, he says, for a light affliction, which is but for a moment, work it for us, a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And then the Holy Ghost says, Norman, think about that for a moment. How does God, how does God uh, elevate us most of the time? He doesn't always use blessings to elevate you. He doesn't always use blessings to promote you. He says, he says, there's a difference between, watch this, there's a difference between the weight of glory and the weight of affliction. Now, we know what the weight of glory is. The weight of glory is the manifested power of God in your life and he manifests it so that people see that you're blessed. Your bills are paid. Drive a nice car. Live in a nice house. Great job. Visions are coming to pass. Dreams are coming to pass. You see. But the Lord said to me, he says, but usually what he does is before he gives you the weight of glory, he proves how much weight of glory you can handle by giving you the weight of affliction. Because if you can praise God under the weight of affliction, if you can stay faithful to God under the weight of affliction, that's why faith says, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you're going to reap. Tell somebody glory is coming, glory is coming. So as I understand God through the eyes of faith, sometimes he will promote me through the weight of affliction. Because glory is weight. Affliction is weight. Just two different kinds. And so God says, before I load you down with the weight of glory, can you handle the weight of affliction? Because God says, in order for you to qualify for what I have for your future, I, I don't have to know. I need you to know how you're going to handle the weight of glory. Am I right about it? And so he says, if you can do hardness as a good soldier, if you can praise God under the weight of affliction, God said, then I can open the floodgates. Because no matter how I bless you, you lift hands and say, if it had not been for the Lord. I'm, I, I got to hurry up here. Hallelujah. So... Don't get weary when you're under the weight of affliction. Because the weight of affliction is going to produce the weight of glory. Jesus was talking to Simon in, second, uh, in Luke chapter 22, verse 13. You know, you know, you know Simon uh, is one of my favorite characters in the Bible. Because when Jesus met him, you know, when he picked him up as a disciple... And uh, he introduced himself to Jesus. He says, my name is Simon. Then Jesus responded and says, no, you're Peter. <laughs> you would think that Jesus didn't really get his name. You thought he got it wrong. But no, no. See, see Simon meant he was unstable and inconsistent. But Jesus said, no, you're Peter. Because when I finish with you, you're going to be that Cephas. You're going to be the rock. And if you follow the storyline of Peter, there are times when Jesus calls him Simon. That means you're acting like Simon right now. Then there are times he called him Peter because he's seeing some maturity in him. Then there are times he called him Simon Peter. But in Luke, he doesn't call him Simon. He doesn't call him Peter. He doesn't call him Simon Peter. He said Simon Peter. Simon, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you 
as we. But here comes your test of faith. Because Jesus is saying, I'm not praying that you won't be tempted. Because James says every man is tempted when he's drawn away with his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived to bring forth sin, 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 for y'all, y'all know that. So I'm not praying that you won't be tempted. I'm not praying that you won't fall. I'm not praying that you won't be tried. What I'm praying for is that when you are tempted, that your faith. That your faith won't fail. That you believe the same God that picked you up once. Touch somebody tell him he can do it again. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. And as I close. Hallelujah. And as I close. One of the greatest examples that I've ever seen in the Bible about developing faith in a hard place. Faith for your night season. Faith when God is not talking. Because I remember when I was in the hospital, I, almost three months, I woke up early one month and said, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 hold up. I know I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, but God, I've been in this place for th- almost three months and I haven't heard your voice. I know, I'm, I know I got the Holy Ghost. And no sooner than I said that, the Holy Spirit said, no, you haven't heard his voice, but you've seen his hand. And so sometimes God won't talk, he'll just move. And you can't just recognize his voice. But you got to recognize when he moves. When he shifts. Because sometimes speaking is not his form of communication. I can talk to you without saying a word. I said I can talk to you without saying a word. If I say this, what you say? If I say this, what you say? Come on now. Hallelujah. And so one of the greatest examples, and I'm finished, and we read this all the time, is the, the life of Job, you know, and, and, and matter of fact, when I look back at all the stuff I've been through, I said, man, I might need to go check Ancestry.com, see if I'm his third cousin. <laughs> but the Lord showed me something. He, he told me that I looked at Job's life in, in 42 chapters, in 42 chapters of the book of Job. We know what he lost. We know he lost everything. We know that. We know that. But, but, but theologians and many scholars try to answer the question of why Job suffered. Some say he suffered because there was a contest between God and Satan. This God ain't never been in no contest with the devil. Some say, well, God was just trying to uh, build Job's faith and, and prove to... No, the Bible says he was already a perfect and righteous man. That Job, Job, was, Job was, was, you know, he, he was getting big-headed and God had to, had to do something to keep him humble. No, 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 no. He, he feared God. He was an upright man. And then the Lord said, I'm going to show you something. He says, if you can find out why I let Job suffer, amen, you tell me. And I skimmed the book, 42 chapters, and I never saw it. The, 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 God never answers why. Job suffered. If you find it, you tell me and I'll repent. And then I said, well, Lord, why isn't it there? He says, the real message is not why, but faith says, I thank you, faith says, can you still believe when the question why is never answered? Did y'all hear what I just said? No, you got questions. Why? Why I had to suffer? Why I had to go through this? And why I had to deal with that? But if God never answered the question, can you still trust God when the question why is never answered? Ask your neighbor. Say, neighbor, can you trust him when the answer why is not answered? When I don't understand. Hallelujah to God. Amen. I, I'll just trust him. I said when I don't understand. I'll just trust him. When the question why. Is never answered. I'll just trust him. Because faith. Is not explained. Faith. Is believed. Somebody shout, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, shout, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
In other words, I, 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 can, I can see, I, I can't see the wind blowing, but I can feel it. I can't see the air, but I can breathe it. Somebody shout yes. And so then when I can't see the mountain top, then I'll just praise him in my valley like I'm on a mountain. And I come to tell somebody, faith is not perfected on a mountain top, but faith is perfected down in your valley. Can you go through a valley and have a valley praise? I've learned if you really want the mountain, you got to praise him in the valley like you on top of the mountain. Somebody shout yes. Paul declared in Romans 8 and 18, he says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Don't ask for glory and bypass suffering. Don't ask for glory and bypass your valley. But have faith in God. I said have faith in God. Have faith in God. The Lord said to me one time. He said Norman. The reason why I let you go through. Some of the things you've been through. Is because you have no idea. Where I want to take your life. And he said faith. That has not been tested. Cannot be trusted. Faith. That has not been tested cannot be trusted you can say what you would do if you were in a situation but you just don't know until you go through with it but when you come out you can look back over your shoulder and say I survived my test I survived my trial come on clap your hands clap your hands clap your hands Oh God, I'm finished, I'm finished. But one day I was doing an interview and they asked me, you've been in music for 35 years. You've been preaching for 52 years. You've been doing music, amen. And you've been pastoring now for 35 years. And so they asked me on national television, what is one of your greatest accomplishments? I want you to know that my greatest accomplishment was not that I got a Grammy Award for Jesus I Love You. Was not because I got a Grammy Award for God's Got a Blessing. Not because I got a double platinum album. Not because I wrote the theme song to the lighting of the torch at the 91 Olympics. When Muhammad Ali came running out, when President Reagan gave the speech, and I was directing the Thousand Voice Choir, that wasn't my best accomplishment. But my best accomplishment, amen to God, is when, when I was on dialysis, and in six months, God gave me a miracle. My faith didn't fail. When my wife was a perfect match, my faith didn't fail. When I fainted and had a heart attack, but I survived it, my faith didn't fail. When they put a stent in my heart, my faith didn't fail. When I almost died with COVID, my faith didn't fail. When I had the surgery and I died, I said I died. My faith didn't fail, but I thought about it. That when I died, like Abraham, I died in faith. And when God brought me back to life, I rose up in faith. Somebody shout yeah. Somebody shout yeah. And I just want to tell somebody, I want to tell somebody, when your faith doesn't fail, you stand up 
and testify and shout to God be the glory clap your hands and give God give give come on jump to your feet jump to your feet clap your hands that's a faith that's a faith didn't fail in your trial your faith didn't fail in your test your faith go to two people and tell them my faith didn't fail in my test my faith didn't fail in my trial my faith didn't fail I believe God tell somebody I believe God come on clap your hands please stand everybody And if you're in this room tonight and your faith has been under fire, God says, I want to build it. I want you to come. I want to pray with you. Get to the altar as close as you can. If your faith is under fire, if your faith has been tested and sometimes you feel like giving in to the test, get down here now. Hallelujah. Here's what God wants to do in your test and your trial. He wants to increase your faith so that you can understand God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, come on, come on. If you've been weary, you know what God promised you, but it hasn't come to pass. Get down here. He told Abraham and Sarah, you're going to have a son. But God waited till the old age. I said, God, why'd you wait so long? He said, if I'd have done it when he was young, it wouldn't have been a real miracle. Because Abraham would have stuck his chest out and said, look what I did. But when I wait until you can't do it. Now, now, now the caution is, God's timing was, is perfect. His word doesn't return unto him void. So if he ever told you something's going to happen, you just got to believe until you see it. Yes. Yes. Sarah says, okay, man, if we're going to do this, you better hurry up because I ain't getting no younger. Take my maid, Hagar, and you know, do what you need to do. And here comes Ishmael. Now, now the problem with Ishmael is, is, is just because Ishmael is here doesn't mean Isaac is not coming. Right. All right. Because the promise is you're going to have a son a child out of your own loins so here's the question Ishmael is the problem Isaac is the promise so what you gonna do with a problem and a promise yeah. so now you can't really enjoy the promise because you created a problem while you was waiting on the promise so tell your neighbor don't create a problem while you're waiting on the promise. Just believe God. Just believe God. Just believe. Stand still. Glory and And believe God. Hallelujah. Because sometimes God will wait until we feel like it's too late but God can never be late because whenever he shows up it's the right time lift your hands at the altar I want to pray it's not going to take but a few moments I just want to pray hallelujah some of you you've gotten impatient and you've 
you feel like God has forsaken you. You look and see other people being blessed and God raising people up. You see how God is blessing their dreams and their visions, their purpose and their destiny. And you see God just doing things and you know what he told you when you were young. You know what he told you just a few weeks ago, a few months ago, and it seemed like it's not going to happen. But I'm here to tell you tonight, if, when you learn to understand God through the eyes of faith, you'll always understand that he never forgets. Matter of fact, you're so important to God, the Bible says that the hairs on your head are numbered. Think about that. He said they're numbered. That's how significant you are to God. Now, now, now he could have said they're counted, but he said they're numbered. You know what that means? That means when one of your hairs dropped to the ground, God can say that was 1,460. Because each hair on your head has a number. That's how significant you are to God. And if he knows that much about you, he says, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, or how you shall be clothed. For your father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So my only job is to be righteous and have faith in God. And in due season, three. But the blessing of it all is that he doesn't release too much too soon. Because if you release too much too soon, you may not be in a spiritual posture to handle it. And so he builds your faith. And so God says, here's when you know you're ready for your mountain. It's when your faith matches the size of the mountain. Hallelujah. You can't, you can't have, you can't have a, a, a one gallon container of faith and believe God for a five gallon. It has to match the size of your faith. So with your hands lifted, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for giving us this word tonight. I thank you because you want us to know you through spirit. You want us to know you by faith. You said, for we walk by faith and not by sight. And then you said, it is impossible for us to please you. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Because you are a faith God. Everything you do is by faith. In the name of Jesus. So help us to arrest our carnality. Help us to arrest our flesh man. That we may be led by the spirit of God. While we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, and the things that are not seen are eternal. Help us to stop treating temporal things like it is eternal. But help us to see through the eyes of faith. See what you see, hear what you hear. Know what you know. In the name of Jesus. God, we praise you right now. Come on, lift your hands high. Lift them high. I speak, I speak strength to your faith. I speak increasing faith. I speak the trial of your faith. Being much more precious than a gold that perisheth. Though you be tried with fire, might be found unto glory honor and praise at the appearing of Jesus Christ be strengthened my brother be strengthened my sister it's closer than you think 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 think. praise him right now for what he's already done give him praise for what he's already done Give him praise. 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 For what is already done. I see it. By faith. I believe it. By faith. Open your mouth. And shout, shout, shout. Now, if 
you know you got the victory and you believe it by faith come on shout back to your seat shout back to your seat praise it back to your seat shout like you know you got it like you already got it and say, Lord, I believe. Come on and take your seat real quick. We gotta do these few announcements, then we're gonna let you go. Have your seat, have your seat, have your seat. 
he's already done. Evangelist Lakeisha Nord is coming with our instruction for Women's Day on tomorrow. Say amen. Say amen. We're going up higher and higher. Amen. Overseer Renee Winston will be uh, bringing forth the word of the Lord on tomorrow. Come on, somebody. Bring your shouting shoes. Matter of fact, you can take your shoes off as soon as you get in here. Hallelujah. I just got a testimony. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many of you enjoy that word on tonight? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. On tomorrow, turn to your neighbor and say, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow is women's night. Amen. And we are going to come ready to celebrate and to encourage our supervisor of women, Mother Ada Stevens, on tomorrow night. Amen. But first, we do have day sessions that will be taking place beginning at 10 o'clock a.m., the Women's Day Service, which will include the licensing of missionaries. Amen. Hallelujah. So for those of you that can and will, please join us at 10 a.m. at the Greater Grace Temple Church of God in Christ, where the host pastor is Prophet Don Phillips, and the address is 1 East 14th Street in the city of San Leandro. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we are asking that you please join us. The day service, please wear your white missionaries. Please wear your white habits. Amen. The licensed missionaries will be wearing their white habits. Praise God. And then on tomorrow night, we are going just a little bit higher. Amen. Amen. The hour of power will begin at 6 o'clock p.m. We have classes for men, women, and the youth. Praise God. Intercessory prayer. How many of you have been enjoying the intercessory prayer? Hallelujah. That will take place tomorrow at 7 o'clock p.m. right prior to the beginning of our evening worship service at 7.30 p.m. Praise God. So the colors for tomorrow evening for the women Women will be yellow. If you have any yellow, you can put that on. And for the men will be dark suits. If you don't have any yellow or any dark suits, just come as you are. As I like to say, just come worship ready. Amen. Praise God. So we want to come with our hearts full, ready to celebrate and encourage our state supervisor. We want to put a smile on her face. Praise God. We want to see her shouting all the way to the parking lot. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then we also have another brother. Usher, can you please bring me that paper there? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Amen. We want you to please save the dates. California West Coast Jurisdiction Women's Department announces a celebration service for our assistant supervisor designate. Amen. Missionary Kimberly A. Phillips. I'm looking at her husband. <laughs> Praise God. Missionary Kimberly A. Phillips will be celebrating her as she will be elevated on Saturday, September the 30th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. at the Greater Grace Temple Church. Again, 1 East 14th Street in the city of San Leandro. So we definitely want to be able to be there and be present to celebrate her and encourage her heart in the Lord. Amen. So if you have any questions, please go to Facebook, go to your social media pages and go and hit that replay button. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Just real quick and then our chief of staff will come power of praise prayer and praise ministry 21st pastor and wife appreciation service this Sunday this Sunday they will they will be honoring pastor administrative assistant Rodney Allen and evangelist Renee Allen y'all come on clap your hands 21 years 21 years they'll be celebrating the address is 929 
Amador Street in the city of Vallejo, and that service starts at 4 p.m. Clap your hands for our chief of staff. Will you do that? Amen. Amen. Come on, let's stand. Let's get ready to go. But while you're standing, everybody say tomorrow. tomorrow. It's Women's Day all day. Amen. We're going to celebrate with uh, our state supervisor. Say amen. I'm asking all of the men, all of the men, CWC men, we're going to be right there with them tomorrow morning. Say amen. We're going to celebrate with, amen, our sisters, amen. And uh, I'm looking forward to it, amen. So I encourage the brothers to meet us. Amen. Right there at Greater Grace Temple. Amen. Uh, in the city, uh, I, I, I guess it's split between San Leandro and Oakland. It's half and half. Right on the border. We're going to be there tomorrow at 10. Listen, the, the classes tomorrow night is for the youth from 6 to 7. Let your young people come out. Registration is still in effect. We have about 43 more portfolios. Say amen. amen. Not too late. Listen, they're beautiful, they're wonderful amen on tomorrow night and even tomorrow you can still yet register, amen and then Friday everybody say Friday, Friday. it is official day yeah. we're going to celebrate our very own Bishop Bob Jackson on Friday, say amen yeah. and all of the men we know and the sisters that know, we know what we've been asked to do, we're going to do that we're going to make our bishop happy and I can assure you this has been anybody been blessed in this meeting look at somebody say we're going higher tomorrow night <laughs> I just feel Jesus in this house hallelujah come on come on come on we are grateful tonight thank God for superintendent Richard Schumacher he's going to come and dismiss us from this place Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Dear God in heaven, we thank you for the uncommon anointing that we have heard on tonight. Our faith has been built. And Father, we thank you for miracles that will take place for the remaining of September, for the remaining of the year, and for the rest of our life. We are believers and not doubters. Dismiss us from this sanctuary and accompany us ever with thy grace that we may henceforth live in peace, love, and holiness. And everybody say, Jesus is Lord. Give somebody a hug and say, be healed and delivered in Jesus' name.